Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about structural and functional proteins, and I'll take you through a couple examples of each. Um, so structural proteins are building blocks that make up the different structures of the body. So you can think of it as kind of like hardware of the body. So structural proteins make up our muscles and bones and skin um, and all of the actual structures of the body. Compared to functional proteins, those are proteins that are not used to make a structure, but rather they serve a purpose. They have some kind of function and act more like the software of the body. So those are the proteins that are making things run smoothly and making things work. Uh, like hormones, for example. Hormones can be based on protein or cholesterol. Um, so protein-based hormones, of course, would be functional proteins because those are proteins that serve a function but don't necessarily make up a structure in the body. So here's a few examples, first of structural proteins, and on the next slide, I'll go through some functional um, so some common structural proteins would be collagen, keratin, and elastin. Uh, collagen is the most abundant fibrous protein in the body. Um, so it's a big, thick, dense protein that is a major component in connective tissue and makes our connective tissue throughout the body strong and tough and dense. Uh, it's the foundation for bones and teeth. Uh, it's also what tendons and ligaments are primarily made of. And it helps maintain the structure of blood vessels, skin, and countless other structures in the body that include connective tissue. So most places in the body where we have connective tissue, you're also going to find collagen there. Uh, keratin is a water-insoluble fibrous protein. That's a fancy way of saying that it's kind of waterproof uh, to some extent. So it's a protective protein. It's the primary constituent of hair, nails, and the epidermis, so the outer layer of the skin. Uh, that's why, or it's part of why, our skin is waterproof. It keeps water out. So keratin provides this strong, protective outer layer of the skin. And then combined with certain oils and things that are produced by the epidermis, it sort of seals the skin against water. And that's why we don't just blow up like balloons when we go swimming, because we're that water is not passing from outside of the body through the skin to the inside of the body, thankfully. We'd blow up like a big balloon and, and burst probably. <laughs> uh, keratin also makes up rhino horns, turtle shells, and all sorts of other features that we find in the animal kingdom. Uh, it offers a protective, durable outer layer. Elastin is an elastic protein, exactly what it sounds like. Uh, that is also a protein that is found in connective tissue. Uh, it allows tissues to stretch. So it's an elastic, stretchy protein. So we find it in any of the connective tissues in the body that need to stretch and be elastic. Uh, so some of the primary areas we'd find it are the skin, lungs, blood vessels, and other elastic tissues in the body. Okay, so these are some example of structural proteins. So proteins that make up parts of the body. So here are some functional proteins. So I already mentioned hormones. Those are chemical messengers that can be made from protein or cholesterol. Um, so hormones are chemicals that are produced by one part of the body that travel through the blood to send a message to another part of the body to tell that part to do something. That's what a hormone does. So they can be made from proteins, in which case they would be functional proteins, or they're made from cholesterol. Uh, so some example of some protein-based hormones are insulin, growth hormone, and epinephrine, just to name a few. Antibodies are also proteins. Those are functional proteins because they have a function to provide rather than building a structure. Uh, so antibodies are large blood proteins that are produced by the plasma cells in our blood. And plasma cells are really just differentiated B cells. So those are our immune cells. Um, so they're producing antibodies to help us fight against very specific pathogens, so virus, bacteria, fungus, or parasite. Um, so those, um, those antibodies are proteins that are circulating in our blood to help us find and destroy so that we can prevent infection. 
Uh, hemoglobin, that's another protein that we find in the blood. It's the red pigment that makes our red blood cells red. Uh, it's a protein that bonds to oxygen or carbon dioxide. And so that's why our red blood cells are able to carry those gases through our blood. They transport those gases from one place to another. Um, and so that hemoglobin is performing a very critical function in our blood. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.